With this schedule, USC may just go 5-7 and seven again. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, with USC's schedule analysis next. All right, you have arrived at the Voice of College Football, Mark Rogers TV. We welcome you in. We appreciate the views, the comments, the uh, the likes, and of course, subscribe to the channel. If you have yet to discover what we do here, 8,000 plus videos. We talk college football each and every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis you will find anywhere online. So lock it in right here. Get ready for 2019. And we are ranking the schedules as we do each and every offseason from 70 all the way up to number one, all the Power 5 schedules. We're in the final three right now, folks, with USC at number three. All right. Why? Look at this stretch of games to start the season. USC could play decent football and start 0-6. If they played pretty good football, they should at least start 2-4. and four. They've got Fresno State to start the season. Of course, Fresno State, one of the top teams out of the Mountain West Conference, won the conference, beat Arizona State in a bowl game last year. So that's August 31st at the Coliseum. Fresno State, the Bulldogs, come to town to take on USC. Then the traditional date against Stanford on the second week of the season, that one at home as well. Then USC travels to BYU, so BYU inferior to USC talent-wise, but the game on the road in Provo should be a difficult one for the Trojans, September 14th. Then they've got the team that blasted them last year and knocked them out of the top spot in the Pac-12 South Division, Utah at home at the uh, Coliseum on September 20th. So three of the first four games are at home, and those are key games, especially against Stanford and Utah. September 20th against Utah, that will most likely give uh, a huge step toward one of these two teams toward winning the division. Then September 28th, USC travels to Washington. The last time they went to Seattle, they blasted the Huskies en route to the Rose Bowl berth that year when the Huskies actually made the college football playoff as the Pac-12 champion, but USC beat them by two scores at Washington. Then finally, an open date that is much deserved after Fresno State, Stanford, BYU, Utah, and Washington with a bye week to prepare for a trip to Notre Dame, who has uh, had the best of USC in recent years. They won the game at the Coliseum last year. They totally annihilated Sam Darnold and company two years ago in South Bend, and USC goes back to Indiana to take on the Irish on October 12th. Then it's back to Pac-12 play to finish off the schedule against Arizona on October 19th, a trip to Colorado on October 25th, tough game against Oregon at the Coliseum and a team that a lot of people like to make it all the way through the Pac-12 and to the college football playoff, the Ducks and the Trojans November 2nd at the Coliseum. Then at Arizona State, at Cal and wrapping up November 23rd against UCLA a week earlier. So actually that's USC's second home date, or open date, I should say, because of the scheduling and the way the calendar reads and lays out this year, everybody gets two bye weeks. But for a chosen few across the country and the way the Pac-12 schedule works out, USC's second open date, their second bye, is the last week of the season. So it prepares them for nothing unless they make the Pac-12 championship game. Then they will have a bye week to prepare for Washington, Washington State, Oregon, or Stanford, most likely. All right, so it's an unusual schedule for the Trojans, but three very difficult non-conference games in taking on Fresno State, BYU on the road, and Notre Dame on the road as well. The two teams that they miss out of the Pac-12 North Division, no big favor in missing Oregon State, a give-me win, but they also miss Washington State, a team that defeated USC this past season. So the Trojans, again, the brutal six-game stretch to start the season. And then the rest of the teams that they play are decent for the most part, highlighted by Oregon November 2nd, and of course the big rivalry game against UCLA, a team that upset the Trojans when USC still had a chance to go bowling last year at 5-6, and six, and UCLA at 2-9 and nine defeated them. So that was quite embarrassing. Tough, tough non-conference stretch. Most of the difficult teams that they face 
uh, in the Pac-12. They don't miss anyone except Washington State, and therefore it's the most difficult schedule in the Pac-12. And it's also the third toughest schedule in all of college football. It belongs to USC. My spring projection, this goes back to uh, April when the series started, uh, when we started it all the way down at number 70 uh, in ranking these schedules. So this is not my final prediction, but this is the projection right now. USC at 7-5, and 5-4 five, five and four in the Pac-12. As they bounce back a bit, get to bowl play, but most likely not a division championship at 5-4. and four. Would love to get your record on USC football and Clay Helton as he stays on the hot seat for now. Heading into 2019, leave your comments below, and we'll be back with schedule number two right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.